muscles of the body, where they originate, where they insert, and the various actions that they perform. Before I get started, I wanted to go over some general basics. And remember that origin of a muscle is going to be the attachment site to the bone that does not move. And the insertion is going to be the attachment site of the bone that does move. Now some of the actions of the various muscles, uh, I'll be talking about flexion and extension. And remember that flexion is the movement that decreases the angle between two parts. And extension is the reverse. Now um, I'll also talk about pronate and supinate. An easy way to remember supinate is cup your hand like you're holding a bowl of soup, and if you dump the soup, that's pronation. Abduction and adduction, remember that adduction is adding to the body, abduction is taking away. Medial rotation is movement towards the midline, so medially rotate would be turning your foot in, laterally rotate would be turning it outward or to the lateral side. And last but not least, when I talk about the mandible and actions of the scapula, I may say elevation and depression. Elevate is bringing up, depression is pulling down. All right, let's get started. First, I'm gonna start with muscles of the upper extremities. Here we're looking at the shoulder and the deltoid muscle is the first one I'm gonna talk about. It originates on the acromial end of the clavicle, the acromial process of the scapula, and the spine of the scapula. It inserts down here on the humerus and the deltoid tuberosity. It performs several actions. One, it's abduction of the humerus, and then also portions can extend or flex the humerus, like this. Here we're looking at the supraspinatus. It originates on the supraspinatus fossa of the scapula and inserts on the greater tubercle of the humerus. The action it performs is abduction of the arm at the shoulder. Next is infraspinatus. It's going to originate in the infraspinous fossa of the scapula and insert on the greater tubercle of the humerus. The action it performs is laterally rotates the arm at the shoulder. Next is teres minor. Teres minor originates on the lateral border of the scapula and inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. It does lateral rotation of the humerus as well as weakly adducts the arm at the shoulder. Here is subscapularis. It's going to originate on the subscapular fossa of the scapula and insert on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Its main action it performs is medially rotate the arm at the shoulder. This is the last muscle in the rotator groove muscles. It includes subscapularis, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and teres minor. Here we have the biceps brachii muscle. It's called biceps because it has two heads. The origination of the long head is going to be the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula, and it inserts down here on the radial tuberosity of the radius. The short head is going to originate in the coracoid process of the scapula and insert on the radial tuberosity of the radius as well. The main action the biceps perform is flexion of the arm at the shoulder. It also flexes a supinated forearm and supinates the forearm as well. Here we have the brachialis muscle. It's going to originate on the humerus and insert in the coracoid process of the ulna. Its primary function is flexion of a pronated forearm. Here we have the triceps, and of course it's named triceps because there's three of them. There's the long head, the lateral head, and the medial head. The long head is going to originate in the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula and insert on the olecranon process of the ulna. The medial head is going to originate in the lower half of the humerus and also insert on the olecranon process of the ulna. And the lateral head is going to originate in the upper third of the humerus and insert on the olecranon process of the ulna. All three of these extend the forearm at the elbow. Here we have pronator teres. It's going to have two origination sites. The first one is the medial epicondyle of the humerus, and the next is the coronoid process of the ulna. Both of these wrap around and insert on the mid-lateral surface of the radius. The action it performs is pronation of the forearm, and it also flexes the forearm. And here's a view of all of the other muscles that are surrounding the forearm. 
Here we have brachioradialis. It's going to originate on the lateral supracondylar ridge of the humerus. Also, it's proximal to the capitulum of the humerus. And it's going to insert proximal to the styloid process of the radius. It's going to perform the action of flexing a semi-pronated forearm. Next, we have flexor carpi radialis. It originates on the medial epicondyle of the humerus and inserts into the metacarpals number two and three. The action, it does flexion of the wrist and it does abduction of the wrist. Next, it's flexor carpi ulnaris. It originates on the medial epicondyle of the humerus, inserts into the medial carpals in metacarpal number five, here. And the action it performs, it does flexion of the wrist as well and adduction of the wrist. Next, we have extensor carpi ulnaris. It originates in the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and inserts into metacarpal number five. The actions it performs is extension of the wrist and adduction of the wrist or hand. Here is extensor digitorum. It originates on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and inserts on the middle and distal phalanges of each finger. The actions include extension of the fingers, two through five. We have extensor carpi radialis longus. It originates on the lateral epicondyle of the humerus and inserts into the metacarpal number two. Its primary actions are extension of the wrist and abduction of the wrist. And that concludes the upper extremities presentation on muscles.